this is uh, the Sine Nomine software talk. If you thought it was something else, you'd better get golf. Uh, <laughs> and um, we've got a few updates to show you since uh, the last London show. And as I recognize that quite a few people came to Wakefield as well, uh, you'll be glad to hear there's a few updates since the last Wakefield show. Now, um, the uh, major one that we have today, oh, this is really confusing. Huh? in front of me isn't the same as the one I've got on the screen. Right, okay, the major update we've got today uh, for RISC-OSM is the long-awaited, or much requested at any rate, uh, contour data. So, um, if we go to, um, it's taking a while to start up because we've got loads of computers loaded on this machine. Um, if we go to um, somewhere like uh, Hoy, the island, and in uh, Orkney, uh, we were, oh, hang on, that's not the right place, that's Shetland. But I'm sure it's got contours. As you can see, we now have lots of contour lines, which um, gives a much better impression of the uh, country around there. Um, you can turn them on and off um, through this uh, tool here on the toolbar. Without them on, as you can see, it's fairly empty. Um, with them on, uh, you get a lot more detail. And um, the data we've got at the moment is just for Great Britain. Um, it's come from the Ordnance Survey under their open data license. So uh, because of that, we've got an extra little attribution at the bottom here saying contains Ordnance Survey data, Crown Copyright 2016. Um, it's a very liberal license. Um, if you follow the link through to the uh, license page from the Ordnance Survey, they basically say you can use the contour data for any purpose you wish, um, commercial or otherwise, um, as long as you acknowledge that you're using our contour data. So uh, you can print this out, you can put it in publications, you can do um, as it's as it's free a license as the OpenStreetMap license in terms of what you're able to do with the maps, uh, which makes it very um, acceptable, really. Um, now, um, in conjunction with contour lines, well, you, yeah, you'll also see there are some spot heights that come through with this data, and uh, close to the coast, you get mean low water and mean high water uh, marks. So, uh, there's quite a lot of information there. And as you would expect, uh, when you're hovering over the map, an electronic map, it gives you information. So, you can see here. This is contour line 70 meters, uh, so you don't have to follow the text all the way along and, and um, find where it says 70, perhaps it's in the other direction. Um, you can just read it off the bottom of the map. The Spotlight tool um, has some extra features for contours, so you can, for example, find um, all of the spot heights which are uh, greater than, um, I don't know, greater than 100 meters. Um, and you then highlight these on the map. Uh, you can see all of the contour lines at exactly uh, 50 meters. Um, and highlight those on the map, all that kind of thing. Um, so, We've enhanced other bits of the uh, system to um, reflect the availability of the extra data. Um, one thing we haven't done yet, uh, uh, Hilary always hates the way I promise things might come in the future because she's the one who has to do the work. Um, one really nice feature which we're bound to get people asking for um, is if you draw a line on the map, it'd be lovely to have a gradient profile of. Um, <laughs> that is all mathematically and technically feasible, um, but we, you know, we've not done that yet. Expect it sometime in the next decade or so. I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll get round to implementing that soon. Um, we also have. Um, I, I explained that um, this uh, this data is Ordnance Survey. Now the Ordnance Survey only covers Great Britain. It doesn't cover the Isle of Man. Doesn't cover. The Channel Islands doesn't cover Ireland, uh, but um, there is another source of contour data um, freely available from NASA, in fact, um, 
and uh, yesterday evening um, I uh, adapted the software that does the conversion to handle the NASA data and so this is the Isle of Man with NASA console data displayed. Um, it still says contains OS data, can't copyright down there because um, it doesn't know that it doesn't. Um, so um, there's a bit more work to do on this before it's ready for release. Um, my big worry is that converting control data for all the countries that we've converted map data for is probably going to fill up everyone's hard disks completely um, and certainly mean that we would have to buy you know, terabyte drives to sell you uh, rather than the USB sticks. Um, I don't know, it might not be that bad. The NASA data is fairly crude compared with the Ordnance Survey data, so um, we're not yet sure how much it's going to bulk things out. Um, so uh, that's that's concerts, really. Um, and I've got some other things to demo as well. Um, yesterday we went on a little uh, trip. I think this is the right fire. Here we are. Anyone recognise where we are yet? Indeed, yes, there's the O2. <coughs> and this is the Emirates Airline cable car. So, um, yeah, we had a little trip on the cable car, and um, you can see some of the uh, <coughs> pictures. There we are. Picture from cable car. So, here, the, here is the track recorded on our camera. And Actually, I've if I loaded it completely the wrong file. No, I haven't loaded it completely. Yeah, okay, it's muddled up. Um, so that was recorded on uh, yeah, that was recorded on her phone, I think, and she took some pictures on the way. And as you can see it now knows where the pictures were taken um, in relation to the track and they were all loaded together. Um, the fun thing of this with this of course is if you um, want to see um, the um, altitude um, recorded by the phone. Um, as you can see, we sort of um, we go uh, up to the first, um, that should be where the first um, support is, I'm not quite sure where the supports are. And then um, when you've got past the first support, it sort of dangles down a bit and then goes back up again. Um, and then uh, starts coming down towards the end. Um, and then just round about here, we all got worried for a moment or two because the cable stopped. As you can see, the, uh, the speed has gone down to zero. Uh, and the cable stopped, and we were sort of lurching there and thinking, oh, what was that for? Uh, and then Hillary remembered there's a couple of cars ahead of us with someone in a wheelchair, so they're probably getting them out. Um, and we then resumed and carried on down to the end, so that was all right. Um, so you can see that we went up as high as 128 meters. Um, don't believe the maximum speed. We never got up to 23 miles an hour. That's some sort of blip in the data. So this is the problem with um, these things. Um, the other thing we did yesterday, we had um, a trip on a rather remarkable, um, rather remarkable bike. Here we are. There it is. This is the, the guys that pedal me, who uh, have an app just like Uber, and they uh, they pedal you on these uh, extraordinary uh, extraordinary bikes. So uh, we had a, a little trip through London. Um, there's a picture of the end just before we went to the National Day Museum. So uh, and. Um, but the point about this uh, is uh, we now support loading NMEA files. Uh, I'm just going to load this into ZAP so you can see what it looks like. There are some uh, GPS devices which uh, record um, their tracks in this format. We've supported GPX and KML and lots of other things up till now. I um, can't remember FIT. FIT is another one. Uh, we're now supporting NMEA. This is as a bit nearer to the kind of raw signals that you get from uh, equipment used on ships and aeroplanes. 
uh, and it looks absolutely horrible because uh, it's a, a, a part of an old format, I think. Um, but we can now load these tracks in direct. This happens to be our camera uh, records uh, tracks in this in this way, so you can see the um, the route we took from just near the National Gallery round um, to the National History Museum. A bit long way round, but uh, we were doing a bit of sightseeing on the way. So that's uh, NMEA uh, contours. Uh, right, uh, rotating the map. Um, we can now rotate the map, um, which. Nice to see the hope field. So, if you want north uh, in a different direction, or if you're particularly needing to print out a map where it would waste a lot of paper if you had it with north up, you can now rotate the map um, and it does redraw with all the text facing the right way up. And also, there's a nice new little new feature if you hover over a map, if you hover over a track, um, it will uh, tell you at the bottom how many how much sort of distance you are along the track. So this track is 5.8 miles long and we're 3.9 miles along it. So you can, um, you can quite easily read off distances part way along a route that you've planned. Um, so I think that will probably do for Risk OSM. Do come and see us at the stand and we can show you more about uh, all the other things uh, that have been improved. And um, this version is a chargeable upgrade, uh, so the, the new version of RISC OSM, um, if you stick with the old version, you won't be able to do the contours. Um, but it's quite a cheap upgrade, and the upgrade is free if you buy an updated from us today anyway. So um, it's, it's not extortionate, we think. Right, anyway, now is the mystery uh, thing that we've been working on with um, Andy from uh, this has bits, and so we need to shut down this one. Yeah, sorry, I need to see, <laughs> yeah. see the shutdown thing. Right, we'll unplug the camera this time. Okay, so bear with us a moment while we chain the camera on the exciting. Yeah, so we're not going to plug the projector into this, are we? We're just going to have to use the camera for you. Oh, well, this is going to be fun. Um, again, come on to the stand afterwards to see more about it. Um, I didn't use the internet connection at the end, so I don't know something else. I'm always running out of time. So, uh, we've got a video yeah, camera. Kind of I was just looking at the table, yeah, that's. Um, you look at the screen, that'd be even more confusing. Right, okay, we've got it on the screen here, but not yet on the. Well, the mystery product is remaining mysterious. <laughs> Sooner or later. Might be revealed. Which way out the camera is? That's the question. Oh, I can see. Yeah. There we are. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's okay. what we're going to do. Whoa! Chat amongst yourselves. So this this um, this product was uh, um, one of Andy's uh, brilliant ideas. Do you want to say a bit about how you? Came up with it. Yeah, could do. Um, web browsing is not great, is it, on RISCOS for the most part? And um, I've worked on trying to get something better for myself and I found a little Linux port that I could just run Firefox on and just plug it into my router and left it running Firefox all the time. And if I wanted to use a browser that wasn't otherwise capable, um, I would just log into that using RDP. And then I thought, what if though, I could use that as one of those little TP link boxes as well and use it to connect to Wi Fi so that I could do some, that somewhere else? So it's if it is a TP link box, you might have seen these inside a PyTop from CGE or, or got one from some other route. The um, problem with a P TP link box is you can't configure it from NetSurf because it needs JavaScript for the configuration interface, so that's a bit of a nuisance. So uh, that's where, where I kind of got to, and then realised I had none of the capability of doing that, so I needed to get somebody else on board to do some of that stuff. I can pretty much set up Linux so I can run Firefox as a browser. Anything beyond that is, is beyond kind of capabilities. So I got um, something called Clay on board to start with, who did some of the, the basic fundamental work on it. 
Council in, in the last couple of months or so. Uh, Matthew has been on board and I, I would say pretty much revamped it to the state where it is today, which is far in excess of what I ever imagined it would be. It, it does more things better than, than I could imagine. So you'll get a little icon on the icon bar when you load it up wispy. Let's just uh, try and move this um, camera up now. Um, to be upside down. Right, okay. So the problem with a Pi Top is that you can't plug it into a monitor because it's got the monitor going to its own screen. So down here, you see that orange icon with the um, uh, with the um, sort of blue bit coming out the top. That's the wispy icon, and the blue bit is showing you the signal strength. At the moment, it's connected quite strongly to Andy's to phone. phone which is just, if, if Andy walks out the door, I'm not. Uh, well, if, if Andy down. walks out the door, we might see the signal go down. You'll need to go further. Oh no, my phone's really good. Yeah. Yeah, your phone's been very, very good. Either that or the software is trashed. It's still on full, <laughs> it's it's on full strength. Well, anyway, come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It will go down. Uh, I mean, it only updates every, is it five seconds? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it might just be we weren't patient enough. Oh, yeah, it's gone down. It's gone down to two bars. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> you now come back. Right, so it does show you the signal strength of this phone. This is really, really bad picture because I'm holding this camera around all the time. So anyway, um, what this allows you to do, uh, we've got, how do you get the menu up on these things? Oh, it's the Pi Top on my Pi Top. Okay. The, the other side. The, the, other side. the right side. Yeah. Oh good, that's easier. So you can configure uh, with so this is the bulk of the uh, software. You get a configuration interface, and if we go through to, oh yeah, that's brilliant, thank you. If you go through to Wi-Fi, then you see it's got a number of different networks in range. It's got bars to show the signal strength. You choose the one you want to connect to, uh, type in the password and connect. Now, I have to warn you, there are a few niggles with this software, some of them being quite serious niggles. Um, it does not connect to the St. Giles Wi-Fi network in this hotel. Um, it seems that we've got a problem with connecting to open, unsecured networks. It just doesn't want to do it. I was trying on the train on the way down on Thursday to connect to the East Coast Wi-Fi, which is also open unsecured. I mean, a lot of these networks, you connect to it open unsecured, and then when you start up your web browser, it takes you to a, an interface where you're then meant to put in your, you know, your email address and that kind of thing. Um, the first stage ought to be easy, uh, but for some reason it's not working with the software on the board at the moment. We've not got to the bottom of that one yet, but with your home Wi-Fi, um, it's and with a Wi-Fi from the phone, uh, that seems to be okay. So we've got, um, you can configure the network, you can also define for networks you've previously connected to whether they are trusted networks or not. So that's, a concept, that's a concept in the configuration because one of the things you can do is share, uh, there's a certain amount of storage on the board and you can share the storage across the wireless network as well, but only if it's a trusted network. So if you're sorting between different networks um, and you want to have access to your OFS shares at home or your Samba shares at home, uh, you can make your home network trusted and when you go to a different network and connect to that, you don't end up sharing your contents of the storage across uh, to the wireless network. Um, you can, the, the Orange Pi has, uh, the Wispy board has a uh, USB socket on it, so um, you can attach further storage to that if you want, uh, which could be uh, Linux or um, FAT or NTFS storage, and the board would um, understand it, I imagine. We've not tested quite all of those things, so I haven't tested NTFS. Um, and you can then, um, define uh, how those, how that storage is shared and which bits are mounted and whether it remounts every time it reboots because you've got it permanently hooked up or not. Uh, there is also a cloud storage thing which Andy and I don't know anything about because Glenn put it in, so if it works for you that's great but we don't know anything, <laughs> anything about it. Um, and there are some bits for diagnostics, so you can restart the software, uh, restart the board, uh, or shut it down, 
or ping uh, hosts on the network for, for testing things out. And you'll see there's also an option to choose between different browsers uh, for uh, Firefox, Midori, or Dillo. Um, and Firefox is the one that works best. I'll just show people Firefox quickly anyway, because we've not done that yet. Is it running? Right. Uh, okay. So, um, one of the things it does, oh, it's all black. Oh, is that the one that was some? Um, yeah, sure, yeah. You want to shut that? Let's just shut it. Buy that? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so is this one? Is this one down here? It, no, that was the one. I think I, I closed it down. So, okay, okay, let's grab that. Okay. So, as Andy said, the reason he had the idea in the first place was um, uh, wanting to use Firefox on a little board uh, on his network. So you just left click on the Wispy um, icon and it will open the RDP client and start up a session on the Linux machine. Um, and it does take a little while to start up for whatever reason. Perhaps it's just pretty chunky software and pretty um, pathetic chip. <laughs> but it does work and it does the job. Once it's started, um, you can then use it to access uh, all those sites which you have trouble with. And we set it up in quite a nice way. Um, the downloads, if you're wanting to download something from the web using Firefox, it will save it in an area on the, um, on the uh, Wispy board. And that area is shared with the Riscos machine using NFS and with Amsamba. And you can very easily open the downloads directory direct from Riscos and copy files off. Uh, or indeed load them back on if you're needing to upload the stuff. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to do it, does it? It's kind of, you, it was working on the stand. <laughs> this is what we have to say. If you open up the okay. right click on the grey bit. What's that? Right you click on um, the RDP bit. Yeah. Right click on the grey bit uh, anywhere in the window. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, and then you should have an option to, to run the browser. Oh, ah, maybe that's not I didn't know that. Yeah, it's only because I accidentally shut it. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Look, that's Firefox. So um, we perhaps better demonstrate connecting to something. Um, this is where we. Who's on next? Okay. Now if I've got to get to the search hash risk or stun, then we've got to see all the live tweets emanating from this show. But um, anyway, um, it's it's waiting for Twitter.com. Is your phone gone to sleep? Uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. So bear in mind, we are accessing it over um, over the phone connection at the moment. So um, and um, yeah, there we are. So. I hardly ever use Twitter going straight to Twitter because I've not really logged in I guess. Right, anyway, so that's a that's one uh, an example of a website working in the uh, in the RDP file. Is that all it does? Is that all it does? Anything else? Well, pretty much I, I guess uh, the rest of it is the is the configuration stuff, isn't it? The fact that you can log into different websites without having to put it into a Windows box or a Linux box first to get it configured to run on that. Kind of do it on the fly. Um, that, that kind of makes it a, a lot easier to use uh, in terms of that and, and just connecting to wireless. You can then carry on if you really want using NetSurf, and NetSurf will connect through the Wispy board to the network. You can use I don't know, NetFetch to get your emails and stuff like that whilst it's connected. So basically, it is the little TV link box with Firefox built in with the option to share your downloads and save those things and put it all into one little compact yeah. package. Um, and I mean, it is, it has to be said, a stopgap solution until we get proper Wi-Fi support from Raspberry Pi's and things in this cost, because I think that's going to be, well, I'm not going to hold my breath, because uh, it's nice to get on and use something, and it's a nice little device. And I mean, you, it, it, it fits very well in the pie top, the original pie top, but you could put it in any Riscos box. Um, and actually, I was, when I was testing it, I discovered that if I had it in my pie top, um, I could actually connect 
by the RDP client. So if you run Firefox on one, from one of the other machines, I like that very yeah. So you know it's quite versatile in, in what it does. We we don't have to share FS working across um, uh, this um, thing. We had a go. Um, I need to get some more expertise on networking to understand what's going on there. Uh, but um, NFS is working very well, and Samba is working moderately well. It sometimes there's trouble. It depends on your network topology whether it can find the other machines properly. So I think uh, that probably be, be, be us, and it's uh, video and Google next, and we want to clear out the way as fast as we can. <laughs>